Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. We are starting off today's video with a huge piece of information about FIFA 23. Yes, FIFA 23. I know we are still about seven months away from another game of FIFA and we're still in the heart of FIFA 22, but there's some huge information about FIFA 23 being cross-platform that I want to talk about today and just kind of initial thoughts kind of put this out there we have this article we have this information kind of you know talking through what this means how it could affect the game and the market in general right we talk a lot about the market on this channel and um I, you know we have to talk about how the cross-platform aspect of a fifa ultimate team would impact the market a little bit so just kind of some preliminary thoughts based off of a couple of these articles here um from this website i'll leave all the links to these in the description we're of course still going to talk about fifa 22 silver stars what's going on in the market a little bit later on in the video but for starters we had to look at this game breaking information for fifa 23 because at first i was a bit skeptical of this i was like man is this article actually legit and then i went and did some digging i'm seeing this flying around the internet like crazy bleacher reports posting about this it's getting posted everywhere and that really makes me think that it's legit. And also, I looked into this guy, Tom Henderson. He's also the same guy that had leaked information from EA Sports, uh, leaked comments from the CEO, Andrew Wilson, saying that the license deal, right? That's a big thing about FIFA 23 as well. Is it actually going to be called FIFA 23? Uh, and this is an article from last week saying that, you know, the four letter words on the front of the box is the biggest benefit to that licensing deal to EA. So this is a legit article. This is a legit information and it's huge, right? This has been something that people have been wanting for so long in FIFA is the cross platform nature. And that is what he says inside of this article. He says one of the biggest changes to this year's FIFA title is that it will feature cross play for the first time in the series history, bringing FIFA players across PlayStation, Xbox, and PC platforms together for all of the titles game modes. Yes, that would mean ultimate team, pro clubs, everything would be cross platform, which is a W. And we've been wanting this for so long because so many other games have moved in this direction. And we were waiting for EA Sports to kind of make this switch because right now there's a lot of things on FIFA that just seem very inconsistent. And between the different consoles, especially PC, and especially market related between the, the different um, platforms on prices, on how they value SBCs, how the market reacts and stuff like that. So this is absolutely massive, right? This is huge, huge, huge information. Now, the best thing about this is you think about FIFA and the state that it is in right now, especially in, in the spring months that we are. We're not the team of the season yet. We're inside of this promo that is not very hyped for everybody. It's just hyped for some people. And you think about it'd be way easier to find games right now if I was on the PlayStation or if I was not on Xbox or not on PC. It'd be so much easier for me to find games in any different time frame or time zone if there was just more people to search from, right? And you think about when you you know, play Call of Duty or some of these other games that have already adapted the cross-platform nature to them, that's definitely a positive of going cross-platform. It's easier to find games. It's way easier to link up with your friends, right? Now, I would assume that co-op would be a part of this as well. So if you want to go in and play co-op games of Division Rivals and you want to play with your buddy, well, you're, you're able to, right? You're able to play co-op together. So that's a really cool feature. I think that's the biggest part about this. It's a W, right? It's going to be easier to find games, easier to play with your friends. And hopefully there's no caveats to this, right? Like hopefully there's not, okay, you can't do co-op cross console. If you want to do co-op, it has to be on the same console. Hopefully that is not an issue. Um, and, and I want to take a look at the market aspect and talk about this as well. Of course, the market on FIFA 22 has been so crazy with everything, prices being so much cheaper this year with so much more supply with preview packs and all of that. And you take a look at prices on the market and you notice that there's always some pretty big discrepancies. Now, I'm trying to, gonna try to find a quick example of a card that would have a pretty pretty big discrepancy. Let's go like, maybe for an icon, let's go like Wayne Rooney, right? Icons seem to have pretty price, pretty big price discrepancies. 625,000 coins, on the uh, PlayStation and he's 840,000 coins on the Xbox and still about 600K on PC. I mean, there's always big, you know, changes. And, you know, some cards on PlayStation are more expensive. Some cards on 
Xbox are more expensive. It just depends. And when you would have, I'm assuming that going cross platform, as it says here, across all title game modes, I find it really hard to believe that you would have a cross platform game with cross platform gameplay and separate markets. I really don't think that's possible. So that's why I'm assuming that there is going to be a cross platform market. Now, how would that feel, right? Of course, it'd be so much easier for EA to price SBCs. When you take a look at some of these active challenges for SBCs, especially for like the icons, like the Desai SBC is 740,000 coins and 771,000 coins on the Xbox. Now, if we take a look at the prime Desai card right now, He's 700K on the PlayStation, 683 on the Xbox, but there's been other Icon SBCs that have been released, especially for some top tier Icon cards. Let's see, maybe like a little bit more expensive one like Zidane, right? Zidane is 1.8 million to do as an SBC on the PlayStation, but he's like 1.8 million to do on the Xbox as well. And he's always been a couple hundred thousand coins cheaper on the Xbox, but yet the, the SBC when it drops, is still the same price for both consoles, right? That's where it's gonna be nice is where you have, um, prices on Xbox are sometimes cheaper for some of these big time meta icons. It's like the reason why I picked out that Wayne Rooney is because English icons for some reason seem to be more expensive on the Xbox, which is very interesting. So I think you'd have a way more level playing field when it comes to SBC prices. And of course it would be crazy for SBC fodder in general. Um, you know, fodder has had so many fluctuations this year and already it's so expensive right now at this very point in time on this game. Uh, and, but that thing, I think that would be a benefit, right? Having the market be universal, it'd be so much easier to even, you know, remember player prices and think about, Hey, this card's a good buy. Hey, this card's not a good buy. And it'd be so much easier to track if it was all together on one market. Now the market would be so competitive and that would be the thing that a lot of people who are used to maybe the, the. PS market, sorry, the um, PC market or the Xbox market would notice that the cards are just, there's so many more cards um, and the competition is so much higher, which would, it, it would be crazy. It'd be really, really crazy. The trying to snipe cards would be so difficult. You add in the equation of bots in there, plus, you know, tons more people from both PC and Xbox trying to maybe snipe that card at the same time. That's gonna make sniping some of these items really interesting if this were to all play through and play out, but I still think that it would be a W overall. It would take a little bit to get used to, but the fact that it'd be easier to find games, there'd be a universal market, which would be where a lot easier to keep track of from everybody's perspective. You wouldn't have to try to remember, especially if you're somebody who like posts buy prices for certain cards, you wouldn't have to try to remember to, you know, okay, he's 200,000 coins on Xbox and 150K on PlayStation or something like that. You wouldn't have to remember those discrepancies. You would have one price on the market for the card and that is kind of nice. So that is the article. Again, I'll put a link down below to this if you want to read through the full thing. There's some other cool stuff in here, right? FIFA 23 will contain both men and women's World Cup boats with EA expanding its license partnerships. Now, again, this seems to be all 100% accurate, true, and correct as it's been posted around the internet a ton. Not that you can use that as the basis, but the people that are posting this out and from the track record of this, uh, this, this Tom Henderson has been posting a lot of stuff so far that seems to have some pretty close ties with EA. Um, that's why we're talking about this today. And that's why we can put a decent amount of, um, of trust in it, that this is factual information and cover it here on the channel. So that's just kind of what I wanted to talk about a little bit related to FIFA 23. I know it's not for a long time, but you know, that's, that's kind of the news right now. And of course, content inside of FIFA 22, as we transition over to that is still going slower than a lot of people would like it to be since we are still inside the silver stars series promo. We did get a couple, actually, I think we had three new players yesterday. We had the Marco Royce SBC. We had the center back Marcelin and uh, we had a new objective center back as well. Those were the powerhouses released yesterday. Now, again, you take a look at these card prices and you, you notice they are so cheap, right? I think the biggest downside of yesterday's content was the Royce is a right mid instead of a center attacking mid like some people was hoping that he would be. But again, it's a flashback to Royce's days uh, in 2009-2010 season with Borussia Mönchengladbach where he was on the right side. Uh, so this card, honestly, this Marco Royce might be on par, on par, if not just as good as his Champions League Road to the Knockout card, just because of that pace. Um, and, and it's a really, really good silver item, and it's 12,000 coins to do. 
I mean, 8,900 coins for this Marcel and center back card. Uh, seriously, it's just so cheap, right? That's the biggest W of all the silver co uh, content. I know it's silvers, but that is a huge W. We did get our Origi upgrade tonight. So Origi got plus two pace. I actually have this card on my team. He went from 95 pace to 97. EA gave this card a really nice boost. Um, he got 82 passing, 91 shooting, 90 dribbling, 89 physical. So this card looks 99 sprint speed on this item after the upgrade, 97 shot power, 92 finishing, 93 attack positioning. Dribbling stats look really good. Of course, he's still not going to be the most agile card in the game, but that Origi upgrade plus two that happened as we expected it to uh, is now live in the game. So that's nice. A lot of people are enjoying uh, that upgrade on that card right there. Now, also yesterday, we had a Gamble Pack SBC. I guess you could call this a Gamble Pack, right? We had the 85 plus triple upgrade that was released. And to a lot of fodder investors' um, joy, I guess you could say, to their to their happiness, you saw a double inform requirement for this SBC. Although, informs didn't really rise yesterday because of this SBC. Now, obviously, there's nothing in packs right now, right? So, opening an 85 plus triple upgrade right now, there's not a ton of hype for it. And SBC fodder is so expensive. If you actually take a look at the price of this on Footbin, it's like 60 or 70,000 coins to complete. 71k to complete this SBC for three 85 rated players or above, right? Imagine opening this pack right now and getting three 85 rated cards, that's literally about 36,000 coins worth of card value back. And you're turning in an SBC for 70K. So this is not a really good value SBC. As you can see, it's downvoted 70%. Now, all I'll say this is, we're probably gonna have a normal promo this Friday, right? So I would recommend, I'm gonna do this. I'm just, gonna not, I'm just not gonna do it right now. You might have some silvers in the club still, that you could turn into that 81 plus double upgrade if that's still available to you um, or potentially rivals rewards this week maybe for champs qualifying rewards you get a couple you know 83 84 85 rated cards in there maybe a snag and inform from the team of the week and you can go do this sbc for less than 20k if you have to go buy a few cards for it or even if you trade and make some coins and then afford the sbc by doing it that way i think this sbc is a good one to save for the next upcoming promo because again you don't want to open this. And right now in general, I'd be saving all your packs anyway, right? Um, I accidentally opened a mega pack from objectives today and I ended up, I did end up getting two walkouts, but if you're getting packs from objectives or if you're getting packs from SBCs, you might as well be saving those right now because there's seriously nothing in packs. And we're just kind of waiting towards the end of this week as we get more information about what this next promo might be. Now, today on Tuesday, I don't really have any information about what cards are going to be coming for the Silver Stars. Um, we should get two to three more of those today. One of the big things about content today is the mid-icon player pick is expiring. If you have SBC fodder, I mean, honestly, I would be t I'd be looking to take the cash, not just because this player pick is going away. If it comes out again and gets re-released, which I would be a little bit surprised with because I believe that would be like the third time that it would have been re-released because this is, it's been out twice now, I believe. Um, I don't exactly remember, but SBC fodder is so high that I would be looking to take the cash on some of this stuff. I mean, I know, again, like I said, there's still a prime icon upgrade that is out that is non-repeatable though. Um, and I, I could see another icon SBC coming in today, but I would start to think about selling off some of these cards. They're just stupidly high in price. Harry Kane out of packs for his gold card is 80K, right? 80K. Ter Stegen, 70,000 coins. And you have 88 rated cards that are 42K a piece. It's crazy, right? They're up like 15K from where they were on last Friday or 13 to 15K a piece from where they were. It's crazy how much these cards have risen. So with all the packs that are being saved up for this weekend and with a new promo coming with lightning rounds potentially and stuff like that, the, the, the prices on fodder are going to be a bubble this week. It's definitely going to be a sell time. I'm just kind of starting to tell you that, hey, this week, especially maybe today, tomorrow, Thursday, for sure, start to get that stuff out. Maybe even today and tomorrow it would be the days that I would focus on. If you have some of this fodder, taking the cash on it because I feel like that's the safe play. Uh, again, I don't know what kind of SBC they're going to be releasing today. Uh, if they're going to re-release that mid-icon player pick. Uh, Foot Sheriff did tweet out and say, tomorrow will be a great day. See you guys soon. Don't know what that means. Again, you can read into that as much as you want. 
I'm not going to read into it too much until we until we actually see some legit leaks or legit information. Uh, but that also has me taking the cash on some of my other cards uh, that I had bought. I bought some Kaka Rays and I bought some Genduzis on Sunday night because when the um, Cyprian silver card dropped on the game, actually a lot of these cards dropped in price, which is crazy. So I bought some Kaka Rays at like 215, 210,000 coins, selling these in the 230s. I got some Genduzis at 300k flat selling these in the 320 to 330 range just because I'm going to get some of my coins back. Now, I want to talk road to the finals here for a second too because, of course, as we look forward to the end of this weekend, we're like, yeah, Nate, I've invested in some of these road to the finals as well. What should I be doing with these cards that I've bought? Taliso's at 150, 160, right? He's 200K. Quadrado at 140. He's now 175. Denayer at 60,000 coins. He is now like 100K. A lot of this stuff, I'm probably going to continue to hold the number one thing that is kind of the caveat of this weekend is how how hype is this promo going to be? Oh, we have Man of the Match card designs in here now. UECL Man of the Match. That's nice. Okay, did they just add one Man of the Match card design in here, EA Sports? Wow, okay, you need to add also the Champions League card design and the Europa League because there's more than just... Anyways, that needs to be added in soon if it has not been already, which I don't see it. But EA, please add more of the Man of the Match uh designs here into the search queue but for road to the finals it all depends on the promo this weekend that's that's the bottom line is if the promo this weekend is really hype there's going to be some of these cards that drop but then also there's going to be some of these that rise back up into next week so a week from now on tuesday we're going to be having champions league games again because there will be potential double upgrades on the line for cards like Toliso, cards like Mares, cards like Kimpembe, who have not gotten any upgrades yet. And we've been waiting for the second leg for them to get that first knockout win upgrade, or of course, to advance to the quarterfinals, which would be a double upgrade potential, right? That's where the big money on some of these cards could be. And since a lot of people are probably going to be selling off towards this weekend, some people are still going to be selling, right? Like, look at this person here. All these Talisos listed at three hours and 23 minutes. This is an investor. This is an absolute investor. See, second owner, no games played. Purely a sign of somebody who invested in like 15 of these Talisos and they have them all listed. And they're holding Talisos price at 200K, right? Because nobody else is listing under 200K. That's kind of his market value. So that's holding his price right there at the moment. But, um, you know, if you have, it all depends on how many coins you have too. You want to be smart. Like, of course, I have got a lot of coins. So holding on to a few of these um, is, is not, you know, that detrimental to me. And here's one thing that I was, one way that I was thinking of it as well, right? Gareth Bale right now is like 230,000 coins. And I, as I mentioned, Toliso is like 150K. I bought these cards basically at their all-time low point while they were in packs. Let's say for some reason, this would be absolutely insane. Let's say Bayern lose. Let's say Bayern lose. This card is no longer a live upgradable item in FIFA 22. All of a sudden, this card's dropping off in price because people are selling it. They're panicking on their investments. I'm happy with that 150,000 coin price range um, because especially for a guy like Gareth Bale, who's not expecting to get an upgrade, right? Of course, they're playing PSG in the second leg at home against Real Madrid. So, or again, yeah, at home against Real Madrid. So there's more upside for this card like Gareth Bale. If they were to somehow come back and win the game and move on, he would end up getting a plus two and his card price would go to the moon. So kind of calculating in that potential reward with also the risk and probably the expected outcome of Bale not getting upgraded and Real Madrid being knocked out of the Champions League. I don't ex expect in the event of that happening, that Gareth Bale would go back below 200,000 coins. I feel like people would see that card at 200,000 coins as a Gareth Bale, the only special card that he has in this game. And, you know, he might get back down right close to 200,000 coins. But I think then after that, he wouldn't really go much lower than that. Just because that card for 200K would be too cheap for me. People would see that and be like, okay, yes, this guy's knocked out. But if you want him for your team, his price has dropped down. It's a good time to buy because people know that there's panic selling after um, when a team gets knocked out of the Champions League on this type of card. So that's kind of my thought process with a Gareth Bale. I'm going to hold it, hope for something amazing to happen, uh, and just for his card to continue to ride and rise. Um, and I've already sold some of the ones that I wanted to get out, right? I sold my Havertz at like 250, 260. 
that I bought it in the 220s. That was a W. I bought a Urente today at 688, sold them for 740. Um, I sold the Mane card a little bit too early, to be honest. But you know, if you're in the profit in general in these and you want the coins, you can take the coins. I just want to kind of lay out that situation for you with like Gareth Bale and Taliso and stuff because, you know, it, it, it just depends, right? These are live cards. It depends on how their teams perform, but that's part of the fun in these, right, too, and that's why they, their prices fluctuate a lot on the market. Now, we'll keep an eye on them throughout the rest of this week as this new promo comes out, whatever it is, the what if promo, people talking about for birthday, we'll probably focus on that a little bit more tomorrow into Wednesday, Thursday time frame as we actually get closer to Friday, maybe have some more leaks, loading screens, stuff like that. But for now, take the cash on some of the stuff while it's high in the market, maybe some fodder especially, maybe some of those out-of-pack special cards as well with new promo cards coming. You just never know what kind of items are going to get released up uh, or released out. And always list for lazies. Take a look at this, Donnarumma, 277,000 coins for, for a Donnarumma that I've held on my transfer list for about a month now after team of the year. I had five, now I'm down to three, right? Because I got a lazy sale. So keep listing that stuff up. You'll get some sales because the market is still high. People have coins, they're going out and they're trying cards. But that's kind of a full circle on the video for today. FIFA 23 news at the top. Had to talk about that because there's a lot going on. And that could be, that could impact the game a lot, right? I just wanted to get some of my preliminary thoughts and get that information to you because it is being talked about a little bit more. Then, of course, talk about the Silver Star Series promo and Again, we're just trucking towards Friday. We're really trucking towards Friday where we'll get back into the normal swing of things for a big promo. Although I did get De Bruyne, Pogba, Elanga, Cherokee, Joe Ellington. I got a lot of silver cards in the club now. Silver Stars team is looking fire. So if you enjoyed this video, put a thumbs up on it. Comment down below if you have any questions and subscribe if you're new. It's been Nate the Foot Account and I'll catch you guys later. Peace.